Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Is there more to Buzz Aldrin's story than just his lunar footprints? In an unexpected twist of events during the Apollo 11 mission, Aldrin claimed to have seen a mysterious flying object on their journey to the moon, fueling speculation about extraterrestrial life beyond our planet. That's only the beginning. Get ready to investigate the strange structures he suggests to exist on the lunar surface, hinting at an even more incredible discovery, the potential of ancient civilizations or perhaps visitors from other worlds. From unusual lights to hidden lunar abnormalities, Aldrin's story is more than simply a moonwalk. It's a trip into the unknown where the moon's secrets could hold the key to revealing mysteries far beyond Earth. In this video, we'll look at Buzz Aldrin's incredible claims, which may make you reconsider everything you thought you knew about the moon. Who is Buzz Aldrin? But before that, let's dive into who Buzz Aldrin actually is. Buzz Aldrin's name is well known not just in the world of space exploration but also in the world of extraordinary talent. Buzz's upbringing foreshadowed his remarkable future. He graduated near the top of his class with a Bachelor of Science degree from West Point, but he did not follow in the footsteps of his father, who wanted him to manage a flight crew. Buzz, on the other hand, had his gaze fixed on the sky. He aspired to be a jet pilot. He joined the United States Air Force and flew 66 combat flights in Korea against communist forces. Then, he wanted to broaden his expertise by attending MIT and becoming a test pilot. His remarkable capabilities led him to NASA, where he was assigned a special mission in 1963 to develop spacecraft docking and rendezvous systems. This person was smart and skilled. Buzz didn't stop there. He participated in underwater training to prepare for the demands of zero gravity. That paid off handsomely when he boarded Gemini 12 in 1966. During this mission, he completed three spacewalks totaling 5.5 hours. That was a record at the time. We can't forget mentioning how Buzz didn't freak out when their radar failed. After that happened, we began to get some program alarms. Give us a reading on the 122 program alarm, he recalculated all docking maneuvers by himself. That's some serious problem solving. Later, he joined the backup crew for Apollo 8, but he had no idea that he and his friend Neil Armstrong would go down in history on Apollo 11. Considering his knowledgeable background and immense expertise, it is evident that he is a trusted source. Uh, when I saw the light come on and the ground Mission Control says 60 seconds, we're still 100 feet in the air. Whatever he claims about the moon and the Apollo mission must hold some degree of credibility for sure. The Apollo 11 mission Apollo 11 is more than a mission, it's a legend that changed the course of history. The entire planet held its breath, expecting something extraordinary to occur. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy declared that humanity would land on the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The job was clear, get there, land on it, and then return. Isn't it simple? This incredible voyage was to be undertaken by three fearless astronauts. The commander was Neil Armstrong, who led the way. The dream team was completed by Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot, and Michael Collins, the command module pilot. A big rocket launched from Florida on July 16, 1969, carrying these space warriors. It entered an orbit around our planet, bringing it one step closer to the moon. They circled the moon, and three days later, they were ready to make history. Armstrong and Aldrin boarded the lunar module dubbed Eagle and set off for the moon's surface. The anxiety was palpable. Then, on July 20, 1969, Neil Armstrong literally took the big leap. He descended the ladder, touched the moon's surface, and exclaimed, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. The entire world stood in awe as this historic event unfolded. Rock, ha, huh? yes, sir, you better believe it, and they're almost all PL she's. As a matter of fact, soon after, Aldrin joined him, and the two walked across the lunar surface, collecting rocks and making history. They left a US flag and a plaque that read, we came in peace for all mankind. That's a big claim. They spent a total of 21 hours exploring this alien world on the moon. Then it was time to return to Earth. Imagine the world holding its breath once more as these space pioneers returned home. They splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii on July 24, 1969. It was a triumphant moment, and people all over the world rejoiced. Apollo 11 was more than just a mission, it represented human achievement. It demonstrated that we are capable of reaching for the stars and touching the moon. It's a story that inspires us to dream big and reach for the stars. 
The flying object okay, let's get into a little cosmic story involving astronaut Buzz Aldrin on Apollo 11 and a UFO sighting that had some people buzzing with excitement. So Apollo 11 was on its way to the moon. Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong were going to make history. They were not far from their destination, floating through space, when Aldrin noticed something unusual. It's important to note that we're using the term UFO in its most literal sense here. It is an acronym that stands for Unidentified Flying Object, so it's not always aliens in green suits with guns. Sorry to burst your bubble, but the story is still captivating. Buzz Aldrin spilled the cosmic beans during a recent Ask Me Anything session on Reddit. 98%, 95%, that's what they told us, he described. An incident in which he noticed a light outside his spacecraft, Apollo 11. En route to the moon, I observed a light out the window that appeared to be moving alongside us. But as usual, there's a more practical explanation. Aldrin went on to explain that this was not a passing alien spaceship. Instead, there were other things that it could have been. Is that a possibility? It could have been sunlight reflected off one of the spacecraft's panels, those flat pieces used throughout the mission. So technically, it was unidentified but not extraterrestrial. According to Aldrin, there will be no third-person encounters here. As cool as UFO sightings are, this isn't the only one from spacefaring people. Another astronaut, Leroy Chow, claimed to have seen four mysterious lights during his mission. However, his experience was not as out of this world as it appeared. But as Buzz Aldrin pointed out, it might not be aliens. However, the mystery isn't solved yet, and questions remain unanswered. It's worth noting that another astronaut, Edgar Mitchell, has some very different ideas. He believes that not only have UFOs been seen on Earth, but that the government has engaged in a massive cover-up. Although he hasn't personally had a close encounter, he claims that they are out there. But here's the catch. Buzz Aldrin, the man who witnessed the moonlight UFO, has a different take on the big question of whether we are alone in the universe. His response is a no. He believes there is life somewhere among the stars. The odds are pretty good with billions of galaxies and trillions of stars, Aldrin told the Reddit universe. The probability is almost certain that there is life somewhere in space. While the truth may not be known, it is an intriguing cosmic story that reminds us that there is still so much to discover in our vast universe. During the flight. Now, some believe Buzz might have misunderstood the sighting owing to his space sickness, which is commonly experienced by astronauts. Motion sickness was truly one of the challenges that astronauts on the Apollo 11 mission, including Buzz Aldrin, faced. Yes, even these space heroes were vulnerable. These astronauts had to go through a range of medical tests. They had to pass rigorous tests before even being considered for the space program. It didn't stop once they were inside. They had to have yearly checkups, including one a month before their birthday, to ensure they were in good health. Before the Apollo 11 mission, they were put through rigorous testing, including daily medical exams a month before takeoff. And if they became ill or injured at any point, they had to admit it. Consider yourself in space, feeling queasy but unable to tell anyone. That's exactly what happened on the Apollo 8 mission when Commander Frank Borman became ill. His co-workers had to deal with vomit and other debris floating around the cabin. However, Borman didn't want to tell Mission Control about his condition because everyone could hear it over the open channel. As a result, they required a solution. They introduced a closed-loop communications channel for the flight surgeon to privately communicate with the astronauts during the Apollo 11 mission. But guess what? Some conspiracy theorists spun wild stories out of it, believing it was either proof that the moon landing was a fake stunt or that Armstrong and Aldrin met aliens on the moon. In reality, they discussed something far less dramatic. For instance, taking anti-diarrheal tablets during the moon landing. They also took motion sickness pills in case they became ill. Space sickness is similar to motion sickness in that it occurs when your inner ear and eyes send mixed signals to your brain. In the weightless environment of space, your body becomes confused. When we first get to space, we feel sick. Your body's really confused, and so you know you're dizzy, your lunch is floating around in your belly because you're floating, resulting in many unpleasant symptoms. Space sickness can cause nausea, vomiting, dizziness, headaches, and other symptoms. Now let us reveal to you that Buzz Aldrin experienced space sickness during the Apollo 11 mission. However, you probably haven't heard much about it because NASA wanted to focus on the positive and avoid any negative news. But Buzz later discussed his space sickness in his autobiography, interviews, and documentaries. So why did he do it? Not just to reveal some astronaut secrets, but also to assist other space travelers. He wanted to demonstrate that, hey, even space heroes get sick. 
a mixture of dizziness and becoming disoriented and sometimes nauseous as well, and that's perfectly fine. It all comes down to being human. Buzz Aldrin became ill with space sickness on the third day of the mission. His stomach started doing somersaults while he was running experiments in the command module Columbia. He became dizzy and disoriented when he moved his head around. It's not easy when you're millions of miles away from home. But being the trooper that he is, Buzz informed Mission Control and his fellow crewmates, Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins, of his condition. He attempted to treat the illness by taking medication, resting, and moving slowly. He even ate some crackers and drank some water to settle his stomach. He was concerned that his space sickness would jeopardize his mission or portray him as less than a space hero to the public. Buzz, on the other hand, persevered. He overcame his space sickness and went on to accomplish incredible feats, such as becoming the second person to set foot on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission.